accountability. But first of all, I want to talk about my weekend. Um, like I said, it's, I always say it's Tuesday night and it is my favorite, favorite time of the week. It, it's a time when I get to be with you and I get to play and ask questions and just sort of like be in the moment and live it like I'm flying free, I guess. Yeah. Tonight I'm flying free. It's just me and me. Right. <clears throat> so, um, my, my week last week was really, really great. Um, I won an award. I won an award. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I won an award um, from NABO, the best board member of the year. And honestly, I deserve it. And that's not like being braggadocious. That's just like owning my ability to do what I said I'm going to do, to be who I said I'm going to be for them. And um, it is a lot of work. It's a lot of responsibility. And um, <clears throat> this was a seat that is pretty much brand new and it takes up a lot of time. So I had to like really into my work, not only my personal work or my radio stuff, my <clears throat> Manhattan Chamber of Commerce stuff my radio stuff, my whole life, I had to like put it in. So it was really, really nice to receive um, an award. Like literally, like I felt like I was getting a golden globe or something. Dream on baby. Yeah. And, uh, and I did, I, I got very emotional about it because I didn't know. Um, and literally a tear fell out of my eye and it was just so great. I really, really loved it. It was awesome. My friend, Corby. Corby's still here. Say hello. Get your face in the camera and say hello to the people. Hi. So Corbin is still here. His 21st birthday is on Sunday and we've been running around the city. He will go back to South Africa a man because he has never spoke so publicly and just been so thrown into things in all his life. But he gets to see that life is occurs in the moment and you can't plan. And so I'm hoping that maybe not now, but like maybe a few years from now, he'll realize, oh, wow, that was a really great experience. And I, I love being with Tanti Noor, as he calls me, Malarata. Malarata. Can you come and say it for them so they can hear you say it properly? Because, and then you can tell them what it means. Sit right there. You can go right here. Okay, guys. So I call her Malarato. And it means mother of love in Sisutu. And so, that's, that's one of the um, African languages that um, uh, where I'm from. Um, I'm from South Africa. So we have a lot of languages. And Sisutu is really one of the best there is. It's easy to learn. So, yeah, that's what I named it because she just has there's, there's this aura about her, you know. She really exuberates love Aww. and she is love <laughs> thanks guys stop it you're gonna make me like get all weepy <laughs> the eyes filling up with water <laughs> uh, he's the best i i don't have any children but um i do have four individuals that if i were to have children they would be my children so we have serena we have sophia we have Corbin and we have Zahara, right? So those are my three children. And the funny thing is, it's like all of them are very light skinned. So their parents, would, their father would have to be white. <laughs> it's so funny. I was, I was thinking about that the other day. I said, wow, if I had children, all the children, they'd have, either the father would have to be super light skinned or he'd be white. Right, because all the children that like have adopted me, and I didn't adopt them; they adopted me. Um, would definitely be they'd be white or super light skin, something like that. So, uh, but I, like I said, I have the best kind of children. I didn't have to push them out, so it's really, <laughs> it's really great. I never wanted to do that. So <clears throat> tonight we're going to talk about accountability. And the part that I want to really talk about is having an accountability partner, right? And so I was thinking about this on um, Saturday while I was 
out. And I thought to myself, wow, you know, in my lifetime, I've had a lot of accountability partners, people that have said they want to work with me. Hi, Amy. Hi, Marsha. Hi, Mike. Hi, Martin. Yeah. So <clears throat> you can call in on this one if you want. People who have asked me to you know, either partner with them in something that they want to accomplish and something that I want to accomplish. They've been like friends and stuff. Let me just give you the telephone number. It's 877-480-4120. And so they've asked me to, you know, like, hey, Noor, let's run together. Hey, Noor, let's work out together. Hey, Noor, let's, you know, help me be accountable to keep my apartment straight. Or, hey, Noor, you know, I need to lose some weight. Help, you know, let's do it together. And so, you know, you set up structures, like, you know, maybe it's to work out, you get up at 6.30 in the morning and you meet at the front door or you meet at a specific location. And, um, one person has to either call for the week that, so if you're running three times a week, that person calls. Are you killing yourself? Am I killing you? <laughs> one person calls um, one week and then you call the next week and then you meet and you run. And so what happens is this usually goes on and I'm sure that quite a few of you can attest to this. You usually meet and you run for like a few weeks or maybe even a few months and all of a sudden, stuff starts to happen like the calls get later or the calls don't happen or somebody starts to start fighting with you around um i don't need you my, this is an actual experience i don't need you to call me well i know you don't need me to call you but we've set up a structure that we're going to work with right so what i found was with this individual that i had worked with um, we set up a structure. She was supposed to call in the morning. We meet outside at the front door, you know, or on the corner. It got later and later, and then it got argumentative, and then it got really ugly, like, you know, what's going on? And next minute I know they're not running anymore because they're mad, right? But the truth of the matter, what came down to is they just didn't want to run anymore, right? They didn't want to get up at six in the morning, which is absolutely fine, people. You can make a structure and decide that the structure is not working for you, but you don't have to kill off the person in order to get out of it. But I want to share with you something that is absolutely, you know, I really didn't realize how amazing it was for me until we actually sat down and, and spoke about it. So I have an accountability partner that I've had now for the last eight years. She lives in Florida and she's lived all over the United States. And we met in 2011 at a conference. And this conference was talking about if you wanted to grow your business. Hi, Deborah. If you wanted to grow your business, if you wanted to grow anything that you were up to, you were to get an accountability partner. And I was a, a very young coach, you know, well, not that young, but I've been coaching just a few years and I didn't have an accountability partner. I had a, I had a coach, but I, I didn't have an accountability partner. So this lady and I met at the conference, we shared a room together and uh, she said to me, do you want to be my accountability partner? And I was like, sure, like, sure. You know, I'm thinking, you know, we'll get together and we'll talk at 12 o'clock in the afternoon or we'll talk like once a week or something like that. She says, no. Um, I said, what time would you like to, to talk? And she says, 5.30 in the morning. I was like, really? She was like, yeah, 5.30 in the morning. And I was like, I'm rolling over at 5.30 in the morning. I'm like shaking the blanket or the sheet to get some cold air underneath the sheet so I can snuggle up and go another lap, right? She says, no, 5.30. But something in me said, Noreen, just try it on. You don't know yourself as a person that can keep that level of accountability. So just try it on, see how it goes. So I just said, okay, yes. And, and it's a simple structure. She calls me one week, I call her the following week. And we call each other at like, you know, 5.29, right? And we get on the call and we talk about what we're going to do for the day, right? So today I told her that I was going to go work out. 
I have to hang out with Corbin for a bit. I have to go and talk about my business with a business planner. Um, and then I had to come back and finish up my homework for my acumen course that I'm taking, speak to a couple of clients in between that, close a client, then come here and, um, you know, down, after downloading all my homework and stuff like that, then come here and do a show that is going to make a difference, right? So all of these things I said to her, and then she told me what she was going to do today. She's an artist. She was going to go into the studio and do some painting and, you know, various things. And um, that's it. It takes all of like 10 minutes. It's five minutes per side. But I tell you what that five minutes has literally changed my life. Why? Because I wake up at 5.30 in the morning. I have somebody that is helping me to be accountable to myself. Somebody that is sharing with me, and we have done this, I will kid you not. I mean, we've missed a few times. I, I would say probably, probably in, in all the time in the 11 years that we've been um, communicating, we've probably missed maybe 30 times. And I say, why 30 times? Because recently she had a death in the family, right? Her mother-in-law died. But yet, let me tell you something. That woman called me and said to me, Noah, you know, we can't do the, we're not going to do the calls this week because my mother-in-law has died and we have to do some stuff. And I was like, okay, no problem. But the following week, she was back on the call and she had restructured her mother-in-law's home. She, you know, all the things that she was said that she was accountable for and had me help her be accountable and her, her in turn helping me to be accountable to me. She didn't miss a beat. This woman has packed up houses, moved across country, and she has still been on the call. Right. So when we come back, I will tell you more stories about my dear accountability partner. Thank you. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Are you stuck in a rut? Negative thoughts, feelings, and conversations got you down? Hi, I'm Noreen Sumter, The Potentiator. Tune in every Tuesday at 9 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time and listen for new ideas on my show, Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way, on talkradio.nyc. Who do you want to connect with? Are you an entrepreneur or intrapreneur looking to build your following? Welcome to our show. Follow, Follow Me Friday, Friday with Joan and Priya. Tune in every Friday at noon Eastern on talkradio.nyc. We're, We're your digital, digital connectors. connectors. Woo woo! <laughs> <laughs> Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. And we're back. I was just sending out the email, <clears throat> the uh, phone number to some people. Um, yes, like I said, my accountability part. I, I mean, like, literally, I want you to know that I'm shocked that we have been partners for eight years. And we actually didn't even talk about like how long we've been doing this. We never really ever spoke about like, oh, it's been a year since we've been doing this. No, it's been a two years since we've been, never. It's just like at the top of the year that I actually said to her, Wendy, how long have we been, we been doing this? And she said, Noreen, we've been doing this since 2011. And I couldn't actually remember. 
but like I did remember it, I met her at the conference we shared a room together and we've been just doing this consistently and it's no stress I was on vacation one of the times that I couldn't do it I went on vacation because when she goes on vacation she calls in right hell yeah when she goes on vacation she calls in and you know so she might you know she might be um doing artwork or she might be doing a chorus or she might be doing whatever she's doing she calls in right and so i went to barbados because one of my clients had gotten married she had done a course workshop and wanted to get married and she got married so you should actually do some workshops with me because if you want to get married you should you know do the workshop and um so she called in, I, I called into her, but the, I don't know, something with the, my phone in Barbados, it just got really hot and it just, literally I thought it was gonna blow up because it, it gave me a notice that said, turn off your phone now or lose everything. But when I was able to call it down, I called her up and told her I'm having a phone issue. So for the couple of days that I was in Barbados, I didn't speak to her. But yeah, we, you know, we mess up, but not a lot and not, in a way that we have to, um, you know, make each other wrong or make up some excuses. It's like, yo, I didn't call you yesterday or Noreen, my, something happened and, um, but we're back on the call and that's it. It's just so simple. But my experience with other accountability partners is that there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, angst about it. There's a lot of, I want to do this, but we're not committed. And what I've discovered is that, yeah, when I first started talking to Wendy, it was like 5.30 in the morning. I was like, the only people that are up at 5.30 in the morning are drug addicts looking for crack, uh, you know, and zombies. <laughs> right? And it was not something I was accustomed to. It made me anxious because I was like, oh, shit, I got to make the call. I got to make the call. I'm going to mess up if I make the call, right? But now it's just like ease. I literally wake up, make the call. If I want to go back to bed, I can go back to bed. If, you know, but what I've been doing lately is that I've been getting up and going and working out like at six in the morning with my other new accountability partner. And um, I would say that if I believed in astrology, I would say that a certain astrology person, a certain person with a certain astrological patterning or whatever is the person to be accountable with. No, it's not true. Because the funny thing is that my, Wendy is a Virgo. My current um, um, accountability partner is a Virgo. And the other one before was a Virgo, right? But the thing with the other one is that she wasn't self-expressed. She couldn't say what she wanted, so she lived in a world of suffering. So instead of just saying, I don't want to do this anymore, or this is too difficult, or whatever was going on for her, she, brought, she tore up the relationship. She broke the relationship, right? It was easier. We still talk now, but she broke the relationship because she didn't want to do it. Now, my new accountability partner is very simple, right? It's like, you know, but she hasn't got the structure yet and call, her turn to call to say, hey, I'm up and I'll see you at six o'clock right? Um, but now she's getting, getting in that routine. And so we're like, up, wake up. Hey, I'll see you in, at the gym at 6.15. I mean, she's the one with the gym in her building. And, um, and so, but the thing about it, it's easy. Meet her, ring her door number, buzzes in, sit down, wait, she comes downstairs, opens the gym, boom, we work out. I bring the boom box. I've got a wonder boom, which is one of those big things and we you know select music and it's really easy it's not even like what music do you want to listen to it's like it's not even that it's like hip-hop this morning boom so we put on the hip-hop or you know I want to do some disco this morning or whatever it is we want to do it's a very simple conversation she does her workout and I do my workout we finish if I feel like I want to wait for her I'll wait for her if she feels like she wants to wait for me she'll wait for me we'll go grab a coffee say a couple of words and then it's hasta la vista until the next time so we work out four times a week now I'm working out because I'm committed to having and this is accountability also I'm committed to 
bringing down my, um, my blood sugars, right? And getting my health in order, which today I'm proud and happy to say got the blood sugars down to 155 this morning, which is a big deal, right? And, um, and she's committed to losing weight, toning up her butt and working herself out because she wants to wear a leotard for her birthday, right? So she, and then it's like, we've also planned the next 90 days because if we just create 90 days and then don't create an after the 90 days, we'll crash and burn. And we're not committed to crashing and burning. We want to continue on. I want to continue on. I'm going to continue on. I mean, I'm actually enjoying it because now I've found some really cool workouts online. And so I'm working out and it's, it's really great. But the accountability, the person is like, like we sent an email today. The email is what can we count? What can I count on you for? Right. What you can count on me for is to be there at six in the morning. Right. If six in the morning doesn't work, we can change it to another time. I'm you can count on me for, to be there at four times a week. You can count on me to help you be accountable for what you're up to. I am accountable for my health and well-being. You're accountable for your physical look how you want to look. And we just share that. And she sent me what she's accountable to for me and my health and vice versa. And boom, we just do it. It's no fuss. You don't have to just, if look, here's the thing with accountability partner. What there is, is it's an agreement and agreements can change and you don't have to crush a friendship. You don't have to crush anything. You can just say, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't know who just sent me the love, but all it is, is just ending the agreement. It's like, it's done. It's un, it's an unwritten rule, but we're the ones that keep it alive. We're the ones that keep it accountable by our speaking and our speaking give us our actions. I am more prone now to like losing weight and working out hard because I have partnership. It's boring doing it alone, you know? And yes, I could get a trainer, get a trainer. Yeah, really. I can get a trainer, but Really, I think it's really cool to have two energies. And it's like that statement in the Bible that it says, when one or more are gathered in his name, like all manner of good things can happen. And I'm really, I'm really committed to that. And I'm loving it. So accountability, what are you accountable for? Or what is it that you're accountable for, but you are killing it off or killing off the person that is holding you accountable? I had a friend who asked me to help her put her home together right? She's a beautiful apartment and she had not decorated it and she wanted it decorated. I helped her be accountable. Did you do X? Have you done this? Because these are the things he asked me to do. No more, no less. But rather than do it or rather than say, I don't want to do this anymore, she broke the relationship, right? So it's like, you still have to do, you still have to live with the thing that you say that you're accountable. You still have to live with your apartment. I would still have to live with my fat, not that there's anything wrong with my fat, but really what it is, I want to really sort of, um, I really want to get my health and the, and the benefits of having my health in order is that I'm going to lose weight. And I am because my dress is getting really big. This dress couldn't fit a couple of weeks ago. Marsha, the telephone number to call in is 877-480-4120. Hi, JL. How are you? Thanks for joining us. 877-480-4120. So call in and let me know what it is that you're accountable for or what it is that you're not being accountable for. Where in your life have you broken relationships? Meaning like you either fought your way to get out of it, your accountability, or you just dropped the ball and didn't show up anymore. So call it in and let me know that. I would love to, I would love to know. So Taking uh, responsibility, okay? You don't have to make it, like it's true, if you don't have to make excuses, right? And you don't, if something goes wrong in the moment, why do, yes, wh well, why do people resist being accountable? We're human, you know? We're always resisting. Even that thing that we say that we want, we're resisting out of either fear, we're resisting out of, we don't know ourselves that well. I didn't know myself when I got on the call and said yes to Wendy to wake up at 5.30 in the morning 
Now, 5.30 in the morning is easy. From working with Wendy and getting up at 5.30 in the morning, I joined B&I, which is at 7.30 in the morning, I've got to be in the city. I've got to be there by 7. And in the beginning, when I saw myself going to B&I, I would get up and I would go, but literally I would drag myself or I would find 10,000 excuses to go back to my apartment to get something that I'd forgotten, right? And then I would show up late. But what I had to do and what I saw myself doing, because it wasn't in alignment with what I was committed to. Well, I saw myself showing up late and I knew that pattern. If I showed up late, the later, the later, the later, eventually I just wouldn't show up at all. And the truth of the matter is that a lot of people, even though they want you there and they miss you, they're not going to call you on your lateness. You have to call yourself. So what I did when at my BNI, when I saw myself getting later and later, is I stood up and say, guys, I've been late. I've been coming in late. And that doesn't work for what I say I'm up to because what I'm up to is getting referrals, giving referrals, creating a reputation for myself. And so what you can count on is that I will be here on time. And I have been there on time all the time. And I've been in that group for now. This year will be four years, right? So from the simple act of being, um, having an accountability partner with Wendy, it has helped me be accountable to myself and what I say I'm up to in my health and my well-being. It has helped me be accountable in what I say I'm up to in a group with other people, right? It's just bringing more joy to my life. And what I can say is that it's given me a sense of consistency, right? I've developed consistency for myself. So when we come back, right back, I will talk to you about my hair and consistency. <laughs> Bye. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Are you into comics, movies, and pop culture at large? What about music and TV? Then you're in for a treat. This is Michael Dolce, your host on TalkingAlternative.com. I've been professionally writing comic books, screenplays, and music articles for almost 15 years. Catch my show, Secrets of the Sire, at its new primetime slot, Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and get the inside scoop on the pop culture universe you love to talk about. For more info, go to SecretsOfTheSire.com. <laughs> Are you feeling unhappy with your body, shape, or size? Ever feel out of control with food? I'm Elizabeth Tripp, your host of Nourish the Soul. Join me to uncover the root to these imbalances and discover a permanent solution to living a healthy life. Join us every Wednesday at my new time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on talkradio.nyc. Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. Hi, this is Noreen Sumter, and I'm back from at Beyond Potential, back from Beyond Potential, <laughs> live life your way. So we have Marsha on the line. Hi, Marsha. I'm Polona Ring, and I just want to say congratulations on your show. Thank you. And um, my question basically is, how do you go about um, finding accountability for the different areas of your life, and how do you determine, like, who actually um, – you're accountable with because sometimes you know that you have a certain personality and you know you need a certain type of person to make sure that you follow through and that you don't be some like more of the person who's doing like most of the giving and um, that it's a balanced um, um, relationship. Well, I would say basically you stay in your lane, right? So what that would look like is that anybody can be your accountability partner because you can just lay some structures, what you're up to, what you want, what you're accountable for 
right? Inside of the, the relationship. Let's, so give me an example. What's an area of your life that you would like to have an accountability partner for? One is um, health. Um, I want to become like healthier, a little bit more fit, and also like to um, lose weight. And I, I need to find someone, but I don't like to get up so early, so possibly <laughs> going in the evening. <laughs> I had one of those evening partners too, and didn't didn't last. You know, she w okay. it would come home, have all these reasons why she couldn't. She's hungry. I just got home from work. I'm tired. I mean, the first and foremost, you have to be that accountability partner for yourself. First and foremost, right? You have to be able to say to the person, because sometimes people drop out. They want it. And that's what they do. They want it. They're not committed to having it. It's like wanting it, but it's a carrot on the stick, not realizing that when you move, it moves right? So it's like, yeah, first and foremost, you have to, you know, share, like share with people, I'm looking for an accountability partner, one or two, who would like to come. I think maybe if you did it in a sort of a group, and I haven't done a group one, but maybe if you did it in a group, you could find that the three of you or could keep each other together. But looking for accountability is somebody that is, is looking for the similar things like what you're looking for, right? They don't have to be losing the same amount of weight that you want to lose right? First, you have to put some integrity in, you know, I want to lose weight. So I'm going to work out this much time per week. And we're going to meet at this location. Does that work for you? Right? And, you know, you want somebody that if they're going to be late, five minutes or so, you want them to be able to call you. So that's being accountable. That's having integrity, putting keeping the integrity in. Because if that, if you don't have integrity, it'll go out and it just get later and later and later. And like I said, when I didn't pull my, when I pulled myself in, in my group and said, guys, what you can count on is this, I put it out in the open. And so then I made myself accountable. So now when I wake up in the morning, when the alarm goes off, I might want to roll back. But no, I said I put my word out there and my word is what's leading the way. So That's you have good. to put it, you have to put the word out there for yourself, right? You have to, your word creates your world, right? So if you say you want to lose X amount of pounds, right? You have yeah. to look at that and say, well, you know, like right now we have my partner. She wants to lose, what was it? Um, I think it was uh, 39 pounds and it comes mm -hmm. to like uh, two pounds like a week for, no, for 39. It's like a pound a week for 39 weeks, right? That's good. And that equals 30 minimum of 39 hours of exercise, right? Okay. And so, and then we have, you know, there's three days a week that you work out and then there's a bonus if you want to do that. But we did the calculation and that's how we came, we came up with those numbers. But like, if you want to work out, you have to set up a structure for yourself. That's going to work. I want to lose X amount of pounds, right? And so that's going to have me put in X amount of hours. And then you want to share that with a person and ask them if they want to do, if they'd be willing to join you on this um trip and you can also find it doesn't have to be a friend that you know you can put out on facebook you can put out on linkedin you can put out on all the resources that you're looking for an accountability partner to assist you um in losing weight and if they thanks for the thumbs up people and if if they have something similar that they want to do you know and I think that's the way you're going to do it. But you have to be the one that holds yourself accountable because the pain's going to kick in. It's like this week I, I discovered that when I was working out, I was like, oh, my God, what I'm actually doing is retraining. I'm disciplining my body because my body is so undisciplined, right? So my mind yeah. and my body have to be in alignment and I have to discipline my body so that I can accomplish what it is i'm here for does that make sense yes yes because also i'm trying to write and it was like i did have one accountability person but as you were saying it's like life happened and like she um like like she stopped being i'm accountable and i stopped writing so i have to like figure out like how to keep motivated if that person like falls um off on the wayside yeah. And there's nothing wrong. I mean, the people that I had as accountability partners that decided that they didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah, they made me wrong. But you know what? I understand their situation. And I guess what it looks like for me now is like I can be empathetic rather than like, bitch. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, and, and I had to learn that, right? Because um, I would say, I don't know how many years ago, I created a group and it was just a group to like to help us to be accountable. And what I wanted to learn from that group is how to manage myself managing a group. Now I've superseded that since then, but that was one of the hardest points of my life because I had met a girl that I was familiar with and I was sharing, I wanted to do the one million millionaire and you know, we should do this book and it's really great. Would you like to do it with me? And she was like, yeah, she thought about it, came back. And then I enrolled a neighbor of mine and then I enrolled another girlfriend and I enrolled two more people. So that was what, three, four, five, six, seven of us, right? Including myself. We sat down, we, you know, we structured it. We'd meet every such and every Wednesday at seven o'clock. First we were meeting at like, um, in juniors, we'd have dinner and we would do the accountability. Two people fell off, didn't want to do it. Then all of a sudden this lady starts, to, you know, who's supposed to be my partner. And I'm not really good at, um, I'm not a good editor. So I, I miss mistakes. I don't see them when I'm writing. I'm just writing and I miss it. Right. She was a good editor. So I gave it to her to do, to edit in the paperwork that we were going to share at the meeting. And so she would do it, but I knew she skimmed it. She wasn't, she didn't really put her all into it. Cause when I was going through it again, I would bump up against errors. And she, I said, Oh, there's an area. She goes, yes, you need to become more proficient. I said, well, that's not my strength. That's why I asked you to do it. Anyway, as time went on, she didn't want to do it anymore. Right. And I really mm -hmm. got that. She just didn't want to do it anymore. And it's OK. It was really OK. But the thing about it is she didn't want to do it anymore. And she knew that if she stayed in the group, she could actually accomplish what she wanted. And people were going to accomplish what they wanted because that's my commitment. Right. And so she started to, like, destroy the group start to like come mm -hmm. play, you know, not participate effectively, just awful. And so we decided that I said to her one day, um, you didn't do something. And I, ah, she started going crazy. And I was like, okay, look, we need to talk about this. She wouldn't call me, didn't call me, didn't call, didn't call, didn't call, didn't call. Then, so the, uh, the rest of the group said we should do a intervention. So we tried to do the intervention, destroyed the intervention. I got so angry, like, I became the living devil, like horn shot out of my head. And I was just like, literally, you know, back in the day when we used to have those you, regular phone, you could like hang it up and it did that clink. Like you could hear, and like you really knew they got it. Like when you hung up on the person, I couldn't, like I wanted to hang up on her so badly, but my, I was just like, fuck it, fuck everything. Fuck you, fuck everything. I hate you, fuck it, fuck it. You keep up. <laughs> Well, that was sort of me too, whatever she. <laughs> I scared myself, literally. My blood pressure shot up. I scared myself. My heart was racing. And I'm like, with this the cell phone, I'm like, like pressing on, like, on the cell phone. <laughs> it was awful, <laughs> right? I'm yeah. so upset. And so um, what happened was that I said, you know, give her the group. She'll take the group. She said, yeah, I'll run the group. I can do better. The next session, she didn't even show up. So the people were just like, and like she brought literally, but you know what? I forgave her. Why? Because she didn't want, she wanted to leave the group, but she didn't want to leave the group standing because she knew if she left the group standing, she wouldn't, they would accomplish what they went for and she wouldn't get anything. So what's better? And it wasn't even conscious. It wasn't a conscious activity it was an un unconscious behavior and yes it might sound like i'm giving her credit i am because she it was unconscious but anyway w i reformed the group um two more people so she dropped out and another girl dropped out but i tell you what the two people that stayed with me he got his 1.5 million right awesome. cleaned That's up awesome. his credit right awesome. the other girl she wanted to get married start a business and relocate she got married, she met a guy, got married, had a baby, and relocated, and is as happy as a pig in poo, right? And the <laughs> other guy, the guy that got the 1.5 million, refinanced his house and has his own business today, and is happy as a pig in poo, right? So, but the fact is, it was an ugly situation, but I grew so much because I really got to see my level of nasty, was evil and nasty, yeah. nasty. <laughs> 
right? Because my conversation was like, if I saw her lying on the curb, I would kick her into the road. <laughs> I would kick her into the road. I'd never say, but that's a lie because I've taken strangers to the hospital. You know, what say her? Yeah. But what I learned is that people can't, sometimes people are just not as open and they can't say, no, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes I just, they will slink away. They'll leave the scene of the, whatever. They'll commit a crime to get away, do whatever they got to do. But what I have to do is maintain me, yeah. forgive them and get yeah. on with what I got to do. So you have to, you know, forgive that person, really reconnect, reprocess yourself and get to writing. Because at the end of yeah. the day, it's at the end of the day, it's your name that's going to be on the book, right? Yeah. yeah. And you know, you have to like stand in what you want, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, and you know, make it fun for yourself. And if I, I think as fun, if you can make it as fun as you can, and you share that fun, you will find your perfect accountability partner. So we'll be Great. right back. I hope I was able to answer your question. <laughs> No, no, you did. Thank you. You're more than welcome. And thank you for calling in and thank you for listening. All right. Have a great one. Bye-bye. Right. And we'll be right back. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant. And on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. Are you feeling unhappy with your body, shape, or size? Ever feel out of control with food? I'm Elizabeth Tripp, your host of Nourish the Soul. Join me to uncover the root to these imbalances and discover a permanent solution to living a healthy life. Join us every Wednesday at my new time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on talkradio.nyc. Hi, this is Noreen Sumter from Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way, and I am back, and I want to say hello to Keisha, Keisha Kenny Ramsey, my neighbor. Hello, Caroline Cole. How are you? Anthony Phillips. Thank you guys for joining me. John Candida, haven't seen you in a month of Sundays. Thank you for joining me. I really, really appreciate it. So accountability, accountability. It is really a powerful world, but the way we look at accountability in our society is a form of punishment. It's instead of a punitive, it's like a punitive punishment rather than taking on something that we say that we're going to do. And I've got a quote here. This type of negative reaction to accountability has been earned. Most of us experience the word accountability as punitive, a punishment, but not doing something. It's viewed as punishment because accountability typically lurks in the back end of back end of the business process. Well, accountability is everywhere, right? You're accountable. I'm accountable to paying my maintenance. I'm accountable for my relationships. I'm accountable for paying my bill at my coffee shop at the end of the month. I must be the only person with a coffee shop. <laughs> A tab. Literally, I have a tab that I go, mm, put it on the bill. 
that came out of a stupid movie. I love saying that though. Put it on the bill. And you know, I know that my responsibility is to pay it at the end of the month. And my responsibility is to pay it. And if I don't have money, let them know and they will add it and then I'll pay it. But I know that I will always pay it because that's my responsibility. That's what I'm a accountable for. And so, you know, funny thing is that, thank you guys for that much love. I love it. I had a, um, a boyfriend who, um, that was a big one. I had him move in with me. Oh, Jesus Christ. What hell, what hell I went through. I cried the first day. I knew something was wrong the night I, he's moving in with his furniture. If you could call it that. <laughs> I was like, Oh, fuck, I've messed up. But anyway, I knew that something was wrong when I said I have a tab in the coffee shop. And he goes, you have a tab in the coffee shop? He goes, what the fuck is wrong with you? I said, what do you mean? He says, coffee is like $2 or $2.65. Why do you have to have a tab? And I said, because I like having a tab. I like being able to go over there and have coffee and lemonade and bagels, even though I'm not eating those anymore and my bill's gone down, um, and sandwiches and things like that. I like being able to run in there and grab some quick food and keep it moving and don't have to worry about paying. And I like when I have meetings in the coffee shop and I, they can put it on my tab and I and clear up with, at the end of the month with them. I like that because it, it's not just having a tab. It's saying, Noreen, we trust you. Noreen, we respect you. Noreen, we know that you're going to pay your bill at the end of the month. They don't give that to everybody. You know, I like that. That makes me feel good. It makes me feel that they value me and they respect me. And I like that. And he was just like, nah, man, you should, you should be able to pay that every time you come in. I'm just like, that's clearly, as you can see, we're not together anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a wonderful experience. And even inside of that, like I learned accountability in having dating this man and, you know, being random and say, move in. I had to be accountable to myself when I told him he had to go, right? When it wasn't working. And I said, Let, I'll give you some time to find a place to live. I will help you. I used to be a realtor. I know how to play the game. And, um, he was just like, okay. And everything I showed him wasn't good enough. Cause he wanted to, I said, don't pay me anything. Just save you money to get out. Cause you know, in New York, you have to save you money to get out. And so, um, I remember one night, this is accountability. There has to be an exchange in energy, right? Between the person that you're being accountable with or sharing a space with. So one night I was sick as a rabbit, right? I had eaten um, some oysters. Like I love oysters. I'd eaten some oysters and it was coming out through every orifice, right? And I was sick, sick, sick. And I'm calling him like, oh, can you, you know, I'm trying to get through to him on the phone. My phone. It's just ringing and ringing and ringing. And this is really unusual. But something said, check your, call him from the internet, call him from your, you know, your computer. I called him from the interview in the computer and it picked up. And I was like, well, my gosh, he's blocked me. You know, he blocked my cell phone. And I thought to myself, that big old sausage, right? I really said something worse, but you know, um, how can he do that? Like here I am, I'm supporting him to, you know, so that he can find a place. I'm not taking anything from him, right? He can sleep on my couch because he wasn't sleeping in the bed with me, right? And um, he didn't pick up the phone. And so I called and he didn't come home that night, none of my business. And I called him and I said to him, dude, you know, I'm, yeah, I needed you last night. I needed some support from a friend. I needed you. And I said, you know what? And with that, I have to be accountable to myself, which is your clothes are in the living room in the corner. And in an hour, they will be in the hallway. I will make sure that they're safe and I will make sure that nobody takes them. I live in a safe building. And, but you got to get somebody to come and get them, right? Or you got to come and get them. Right. I, it's not something I ever wanted to do, but I had to be accountable to me. He wasn't going to take care of me. I could have been sicker, lying up, you know, crippled or messed up or whatever. He wasn't going to take care of me. I have to be. Sometimes you just have to be accountable. You have to do what you have to do. And when you know you're being accountable and taking on what you have to take on and you're comfortable, it's not comfortable, but there's a level of certainty that I know that this person has to go. 
And these are the actions that I have to take. I'm not going to curse him. I'm not going to fight with him. I'm not going to get into it because ultimately this is my right and my accountability to me. What I'm going to say is what I'm going to say. These are your things. I needed you. I'm here. I am supporting you. not returning the support, right? So you have to go. It's you've overstayed anyway, because I gave you a certain time. You have to go. And you have to take that responsibility and you have to be secure. And yes, I was shitting my pants because I was very scared. <laughs> I was scared because you're moving people's things. You're touching people's things. You're putting people's stuff outside of your house. You don't know. You could, you know, invoke King Kong or something. But I was scared. And, um, but I did it anyway, right? So it's like anything that we say that we have to do. I'm accountable for this show, right? Even though if I went off the air, I don't know, would I be missed? You could give me some hearts for that. Y'all yeah, better let me know I'd be missed, right? <laughs> but even if I, you know, I'm accountable for being here on time, nine o'clock every Tuesday. I'm responsible for having good quality um, conversations. I don't know what that, you know, like, talk about thank you for the love. I really appreciate that. And, um, you know, I want to provide really great content and I want to provide really good service because that's who I am. That's what I'm about. So there's an accountability that I have to be here, right? I have an agreement with Sam. That's an accountability, right? If I'm running late, I let him know I'm running late, but I do my damnedest. I bend time to be here. I bend time to be here. And I've, I've seen it. I've done it many, many times. And that's what it's like integrity, Without integrity, nothing works. I learned that at Landmark. I experienced it at Landmark. And I can tell you, I was a person. Thanks, Deb. I was a person. I didn't have any integrity. And I was really freaking shitty about it too, you know? It was like, I was a person. I was saying this to somebody the other day. I was always late. And my friend Donna Marie, who's on the call right now, she could tell you I was late. And I didn't know what the impact of being late was on my friends. But it was like not showing up, not know if I'm coming, coming late, missing all the fun, missing the conversation, interrupting the flow of the conversation because now they have to go back through things to bring me up to date. And like I really did not know the impact on them. And then there was an impact on me. But like I've really cleaned up my game and continue to clean up my game and know that I can't let it slip. I can't let it slip. You know, I have to, accountability is everything. It's a part and parcel of everything. And I will tell you that one, of, I said I was going to talk to you about my hair, like tell you about my hair. So I've been wearing my hair like this now for like pretty much, I'm 55 and I've been wearing my hair natural now for 40, about, I'd say about 40, 45. 40, 42 years I've been wearing my hair like this. And I've had people like say things to me about my hair, like, oh, you need to fix it. You need to change it. You need to do this. If You know, even today I heard like, if you change your hair, get a relaxer, get it colored, you'll find a man, right? I'm like, really? If I have to change my hair, get a relaxer to get a man, I am going to have to stay single because I like myself, right? I'm accountable to this being and being happy. So I've got two more minutes and I'm gonna end this conversation by asking you, where in your life are you not being accountable? And where, and what is it that you want in your life that you would actually step up your accountability? And I would love to know that, what that is. And you can email me at Noreen at NoreenSumterCoach.com. I'm now up to 11, 1,010 followers on my Instagram, which is Noreen Sumter Coach. Follow me on Instagram and let me know where in your life that you're being accountable. And this is Noreen Sumter. And Corbin, you want to say goodbye because you're leaving next week. You won't be here. So this is my little son. Bye, guys. So Corbin will be leaving. He'll be 21 on Sunday. So 
I'm, I'm sure they'll all wish you a happy birthday, a happy 21st birthday, and tell you to enjoy your 21. And we'll see you next week. Bye. You are listening to the Talking Alternative Network. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Are you stuck in a rut? Negative thoughts, feelings, and conversations got you down? Hi, I'm Noreen Sumter, the Potentiator. Tune in every Tuesday at 9 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time and listen for new ideas on my show, Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way, on talkradio.nyc. Mm-hmm.